So what should you eat? That is the question I'm going to tackle today. Hello, this is Aishan, aka The Omnivorist. I'm a nutritional therapy practitioner in Paris, France, and I'm passionate about helping busy moms recover their energy and vitality through real food and healthy habits. And welcome to episode two of my weekly series, Ask the Omnivorist, Food and Health Nuggets for Busy Mamas. Now, last week, I defined for you just what real food means. And this week, I'm going to get into a little bit more detail about just what that looks like on a more specific detailed level. Um, now, as I mentioned last time, as an NTP and a mom, I recommend that you base your diet on real whole foods that your great grandmother would have recognized, that foods that are properly sourced, um, properly prepared, and that are seasonal and local as much as possible. And I also talked about the notion of nutrient density. And why is that so important? Because imagine for a minute that your body, it's every cell, it's every enzymatic and metabolic process relies on the nutrients that it derives from the food that you eat. Sounds pretty common sense, right? But unfortunately, it is far from being the reality for many of us today. So um, let us get into what that looks like, actually. And when I say this, um, basing your diet, like the bulk of your diet on these real foods, this is something that should probably be your number one health priority, you know, before you think of things like supplements or so-called superfoods. Um, now, without further ado, let is, let's break that down a little bit. So what that actually looks like on your plate. Um, we're going to talk about the three um, by, th by the macronutrients. So we have three macronutrients, the carbohydrates, proteins, and fat. So carbohydrates as a whole tend to get a bad rap, but that's usually because of all the processed and potentially inflammatory stuff that is so ubiquitous in the modern diet today. So, you know, we're talking things like industrial breads and pasta and cookies and cakes and bagels and, um, and so much else that really is just everywhere. And it's true that those foods are not doing your, um, those kinds of refined carbs are not doing your health any favors. Now that much we can agree upon. So what I would recommend once again that you do is focus on quality and not the quantity. So think of it as um, a consuming real whole food forms of carbohydrates. So things like seasonal vegetables. Actually, carbohydrates are probably the best opportunity that you have for introducing the greatest um, amount of variety into your diet. So think about it like eating the rainbow um, and try to have as much color on your plate as possible. So right now, um, where I am right now in the winter, that looks like uh, carrots and beets and parsnips, um, radishes, leafy greens, of course, all kinds of winter squash, um, cruciferous vegetables like cabbage and cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, also mushrooms. I mean, the possibilities really are endless here. Um, so what you think, you can think about it on what that looks like on your plate. You can think about maybe a third of your plate that's composed of um, these kinds of um, what we call non-starchy vegetables. Um, and then you have, um, speaking of carbohydrates, we have fruit as well, which I, is another one of my favorites because I think it's like, it's a, it's, it's a wonderful fruit is just a great way to get um, real raw food into your diet in a really practical package. So they make, of course, great snacks and great, um, a simple dessert as well. So right now what we have in the, in the, in the stall, on the stalls is um, all kinds of citrus fruit, kiwis, um, persimmons, which I love, love, love. Um, what else do we have right now? Of course, all kinds of apples and pears, um, uh, kumquats, etc. Um, and another thing that I recommend that you consume is what, is what are called safe starches. Now, these are starchy plants. And when we say safe, we mean the fact that they are relatively low in anti-nutrients. So these are harmful compounds that could be irritating to your gut. Um, so foods like white rice, white potatoes, sweet potatoes, plantains, um, yuca, tapioca, etc. Now, you might be a little surprised that I recommend this because I just talked about nutrient density, right? And these foods are not necessarily, some of them are, but some of them aren't so nutrient dense. But that is not, that is super important, nutrient density, but it, it isn't the only 
um, criterion that we have. I mean, sometimes having like, you know, having a concentrated source of energy like this can be really helpful. And a lot of people really do well on these kinds of foods. Um, and another thing um, I would recommend, actually something I would not recommend, let's say here is, um, is the is gluten containing grains. So of course we're talking about wheat and rye and barley. Um, I don't wanna to get too much into that right now, but I do have a whole video about um, that. So I'm going to post that in the comments. If you're interested, go check that out. I personally do include um, some non-gluten containing grains or actually pseudo grains like um, quinoa and buckwheat and, um, and amaranth, for example. Uh, I also think that Properly prepared um, legumes or pulses, as the as the English would say, um, <clears throat> so things like beans and lentils and chickpeas. These things can definitely have their place in a in a healthy diet if you support them well. Um, as I mentioned last time, you should properly prepare those. So you you get the dry stuff and you soak it in a in a little bit of, with a little vinegar and you cook those um, properly and thoroughly. So um, for some people, however. Uh, especially those with chronic conditions, uh, especially those with autoimmune conditions, um, even when they're properly prepared, these foods can still be irritating to the gut. So that's something to consider. But if you can handle them well, they can be a wonderful addition to your diet and they're, they're also pretty economical. So that's nice. Um, do we have anything else on carbs? I think we're good with carbs. Um, so next up is protein. Now, good quality protein is crucial for optimal health. Now, of course, this is especially true for, you know, pregnant women, growing children and the like, but it is really true for everybody, even though maybe the amount of it that you need um, over a lifetime might vary. So we're talking um, really well-sourced meat and poultry. So this will be grass-fed, pasture-raised um, animals. Um, you know, as much as possible, try to buy from producers who have uh, practices that are respectful of the animals, respectful of the earth, and as a result, respectful of human health. Um, also, free-range eggs. Uh, if you live in Europe, there's a coding system on the eggs. Um, if it starts with a zero, that means it was organic. Um, what else comes into this category? Uh, of course, wild-caught fish as opposed to farm-raised fish, um, seafood, of course. Also, um, cold water fatty fish, these are really, really important for health as well, especially brain health. So things like sardines and mackerel and herring, um, anchovies. And of course, these are really convenient as well. I love always having some, you know, a few cans of sardines or, or mackerel. They make for a really easy protein. They are, they transport really easily. Um, what else? A wild game, if you have access to that, could be wonderful. And the other um, principle I wanted to mention is eating the whole animal. Now, back in the day, they would not let an animal go to waste. Um, they would make use of every part of that animal because they knew how precious it was. Um, so things like organ meats. Now, I just talked about nutrient density. When it comes to that, you really can't do any better than organ meats. These are nutritional powerhouses. Um, so, and also things like bones, of course, bone marrow is delicious and really wonderful and bone broth, homemade bone broth. Now that is something that you should really try to get into the habit of. You can base your cooking, you know, base your soups and stews um, on, on homemade broth. Of course, I re definitely don't recommend that you get those bouillon cubes because those are not real food, as you can imagine. Often they're filled with pretty nasty chemicals, and even if not, um, they just won't have any of the beneficial properties of the homemade stuff. Um, what else? Oh yeah, the other thing that um, in the protein category will be, and maybe also goes into the fat as well, is dairy. Now, I also, if you tolerate it well, I do recommend um, having you know unprocessed, as much as possible, unprocessed whole, um, raw or fresh or cultured dairy. That could also be a great addition. Um, and I don't recommend the really industrial processed stuff. That is unfortunately what most of us have access to uh, uh, on a daily basis. Now, I also have another video about this, which I will post in the comments. If you're curious, you can check that out as well. Um, and now on to fats. Now, if you um, have been conditioned to fear fats, 
um, try to avoid them or minimize them in your diet, please, please reconsider that. And please know that good fats in the right amount are crucial to optimal health, to robust health, really. Once again, I have a video about that, which I will post in the comments. For more information, you can go check that out. Um, but good sources of fats include, you know, all kinds of traditional things like um, good quality olive oil, a cold pressed um, extra virgin organic olive oil, butter, coconut oil, um, sustainable red palm oil, organic duck and goose fat. Now those are great for roasting vegetables, for example, um, lard from happy pigs. These are all great sources of fats to cook with. Um, also, you, you, know, you should maybe not um, avoid the fattier cuts of meat um, and um, fish skin and things like that. Also, egg yolks and avocados are wonderful sources of good fats. Um, and also, yeah, one thing to consider also mention is nuts and seeds. Now, these are also, um, they have beneficial fats. Now, when I say beneficial fats, it's good to have a variety of these fats in your diet. So not just only one thing, but, you know, have a um, strive for a variety of them. Um, and nuts and seeds, of course, not, you know, in prepackaged and processed, but as close to the whole um, raw form as possible. Um, and also avoid those modern vegetable oils like sunflower oil, canola, um, soybean oil, corn oil, etc. Once again, in that video, I get into more detail about this. Um, so yeah, hopefully with these concrete examples, you're able to get a clearer picture of just what we mean by a real food diet. Um, but of course, once again, the aim here is not to be perfectionist. It's not to obsess over it, but you know, just think about, you know, uh, consider these principles and try to incorporate them as much as, you know, time, budget, and sanity will allow. Um, and also keep in mind that it is your overall diet, maybe over the course of a few days or maybe a week, that is um, more important than each individual bite that you take. So that's what I have for you today. Um, if you'd like even more tips and tricks from me, and get a backstage pass into my own kitchen, make sure to join um, our uh, free private Facebook group, the Mama Reboot Community. Again, I will put the link um, in the comments. And um, if you have any questions for me, please let me know in the comments or through a private message about today or about maybe for a future episode. And if you found this information useful, please like it and share it. And I will see you right here next week. Thank you so much for your support and have a wonderful day.